Well, as promised, after a lot of deliberation and soul-searching, uh, as I chatted with uh, Hans uh, from Norway and Bill from uh, Florida, we have finally come up with a winner for this Soaholic contest. And I should probably step into the shot, shouldn't I? So you don't hear me just behind the camera. Uh, we finally have come up with a winner for this uh, contest. And I'm going to kind of slide down a little bit. <laughs> I feel like a big kid in a little chair or something like that. Uh, we finally have come up with a winner uh, after a lot of soul searching. Not easy at all. So many amazing entries uh, that were submitted. And I want to first of all acknowledge uh, all of those that submitted uh, writings. I'm not going to say essays. I'm not going to say uh, uh, poems or anything like that. I'll just say incredible writings. Incredible writings. And uh, something I've always prized myself at is being able to write creatively. And all of you that entered, all 11 of you that entered, uh, totally uh, put me to shame. As I read them, I was like, wow, wow. And Bill and Hans felt exactly the same way. So each one of you in our book is a winner uh, as far as this contest and submitting the entry that you did. And I want to acknowledge each one of them. And I'm, I'm acknowledging them in the order that they were posted uh, just for making it easier. Uh, so the first one that posted was uh, Veronica uh, Elvira. And you know her because she won that uh, electric so handy uh, that I gave away as an impromptu contest. Uh, Randy Johnson, who actually was submitted by his daughter, Emily. So Emily, thank you for going in the extra yard uh, for your dad and getting his entry submitted as well. Uh, Lynn, and Lynn, I'm going to, if I say your last name wrong, please forgive me. Uh, Lynn Samat. Samantinger, Sam, Samantinger, if I did it wrong, I apologize. Uh, Sonny Jim, Debbie uh, Ga Gauvin, Gray Day Wybe, Mark Neering, Rush, Rashama Kel Kelkar, Linda Noble Thomas, I wish they were all that easy. Uh, and hopefully uh, you'll forgive me if I pronounced your name wrong. I apologize. Uh, Mary Ann uh, Elvira. Oh, yeah, Elvira. Elvira. And then finally, uh, the last entry was uh, Ava uh, Shoulder. A Ava Shoulder. And each one of these entries, all 11 of them, uh, Bill and Hans and I just, how do you pick a winner? How do you pick a winner? They were all fabulous. They were all heartfelt. They were all creative. They were all insightful. Uh, they all, uh, to some extent, tied in this silly little poster behind me of this soaholic uh, lady. And I loved all the names you came up with as well. The names were fabulous. Uh, and Bill and Hans and I all had a slightly different take on uh, each of the writings. But there ultimately was a consensus. I know, uh, and I'll share with you, why shouldn't I share? Um, you know, I know that uh, Bill uh, had a strong favor towards uh, Ava's, uh, as did Hans, as did I. Uh, we also liked uh, Mary Ann uh, Overa's as well. All three of us had that in our top three. Uh, uh, and then also Russia. R Rashama Kelkar, uh, a number of us liked his writing as well. And ultimately, Debbie uh, uh, Gavin, Gavin or Gavin? G Debbie, I apologize, you're even a customer of mine. And I always go by just Debbie. I should probably just stop with Debbie. <laughs> but we also like Debbie's writing as well. Uh, and when I say liked, I mean it hit our top three. Uh, it doesn't mean that we didn't like Veronica's. It doesn't mean that we did not like Randy's. It doesn't mean that we didn't like Lynn's. It doesn't mean that we didn't like uh, Sonny's uh, or Gray's or Mark's or Linda's. Uh, all of those we had real positive remarks about. But it comes down where you have to finally whittle it down to a list of three uh, and then pick a, an ultimate winner. 
uh, which is what we did. But before I share that winner with you, I want to share something else to put this contest into perspective. Uh, when people write something, it's very personal. When people write something, it's heartfelt. It comes uh, from deep inside of them and oftentimes will tie in significant events or significant people in their life as well. And so if they submit something, number one, they have incredible courage to step out of the shadows and, and submit something and theirs is not selected, uh, it can be hurtful. And I don't want you to feel that way. I don't want you to walk away from this saying, they didn't like what I wrote. There couldn't be anything further from the truth. Uh, there couldn't be anything less accurate than that. Uh, choosing something like this, as Bill and Hans and I looked at these writings, is very subjective. Uh, we bring our own paradigm to the, uh, you know, to the evaluation process. We bring our, our baggage. We bring our subjectiveness, our, our presuppositions, to use a $2 word. And we ultimately then whittle down that list to the three top people that we enjoyed their writing the most. But, you know, a lot of things can color that. A lot of things can color that. So without rambling as I do so well, let me just say that we liked all of the submissions. Uh, but we finally had to whittle it down and pick the ones that, for whatever reason, from our own perspective, inspired us or or tickled us or uh, you know somehow stirred us in such a way that it just stood out for us it stood out for us and before I name the winner again let me get back on track here which you already know it's so easy for me to get off of track uh, or to get off track I should say let me share um, let me share something with you as far as another writer that didn't always get viewed the same way, didn't always get evaluated the same way, didn't always get assessed the same way, and yet ultimately persevered and become one of, became one of the greatest writers of all time. And I'm speaking about none other than Theodore Geisel. Theodore Geisel. Who the heck is Theodore Geisel? What have you... What's in your water, Scott? What the heck is in your water? Theodore Geisel? What? You're going to somehow make us feel better about not being selected? Not having our writing selected? After we poured our heart and soul into it? With a Theodore Geisel? What? Theodore Geisel is also known as Dr. Seuss, if you didn't know that. Let me read a little bit about Dr. Seuss. The first book of Theodore Seuss Geisel, better known to us as Dr. Seuss, was rejected by 27 publishers before it was finally accepted by Vanguard Press. Being determined in the face of obstacles is vital. Theodore Geisel, Dr. Seuss, is a great example of that himself. Many of his 44 books remain wild bestsellers. In 2013, Green Eggs and Ham sold more than 700,000 copies in the United States, more than Goodnight Moon. The Cat in the Hat sold more than five, 500,000 copies, as did Oh, The Places You'll Go, and One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. And five more Dr. Seuss books each sold more than 250,000 copies. That's eight books with total sales of more than 3.5 million copies in one year. Another eight Dr. Seuss titles sold 100,000 copies or more. Theodore Geisel is selling 11,000 Dr. Seuss books every day of the year in the United States alone, 24 years after he died. He has sold 600 million books worldwide since his first book. And to think that 
I saw it on Mulberry Street was published in 1937 and as inevitable as Dr. Seuss's appeal seems now, Mulberry Street was rejected by 27 publishers before being accepted by Vanguard Press. The story of Geisel being rejected 27 times before his first book was published is oftentimes repeated. I'm repeating it now. But the details are worth relating. Geisel says he was walking home, and Geisel again is Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss was walking home, stinging, stinging and, and just upset because he had just received the notice for the 27th time of that book being rejected. With the manuscript and drawings for Mulberry Street under his arm, when an acquaintance from his student days at Dartmouth College bumped into him on the sidewalk on Madison Avenue in New York City, Mike uh, Mc, Mc, McClintock asked what Geisel was carrying. That's a book no one will publish, said Geisel. I'm lugging it home to burn. McClintock had just that morning been made editor of child's books, excuse me, children's books at Vanguard. He invited Geisel up to his office, and McClintock and his publisher bought Mulberry Street that day. When the book came out, the legendary book reviewer for the New Yorker, Clinton Fadiman, captured it in a single sentence. They say it's for children, but better get a copy for yourself and marvel at the good Dr. Seuss's impossible pictures and the moral tale of the little boy who exaggerated, not wisely, but too well. Geisel would later say of meeting McClintock on that street, if I'd been going down the other side of Madison Avenue, I'd be in the dry cleaning business today. Isn't it incredible how those 27 people or those 27 organizations that read that same book and said, we're not interested, it's garbage. It's, we're not interested, it's, it's not gonna appeal to anybody. It's not going to sell. And that's what it's about in the publishing business. What's gonna sell? What's gonna hit the best selling list? 27 people rejected, 27 people grossly made miscalculations or misperceptions or messed up when it came to assessing Geisel's work, ultimately Dr. Seuss's work. So let me just say, if those 27 publishers that did this professionally for a living over and over and over and over again, manuscript after manuscript after manuscript after manuscript, and they had all that experience under their belt, that there's a slight possibility that if you didn't get your writing selected, that maybe Bill and Hans and I made some miscalculations or at least misperceptions or at least didn't assess it the same way that that other publisher Vanguard ultimately would have assessed it. Does that make sense? In other words, don't take it to heart if your writing wasn't selected because if Dr. Seuss who had all of that success, all of that fame, persevered, persevered through all of those rejections, 27 rejections before, I don't believe in chance, but many would say by chance, happened to be walking down the right side of that street and met that acquaintance instead of walking down the left side and they may have just passed without ever talking, without Dr. Seuss ever going up to that office. Uh, Dr. Seuss may have been one of the greatest dry cleaners in all of New York City.
but he never would have been the beloved author that both little kids and big kids like me and like Bill and like Hans can read those stories even today and be an ultimate wonder of the genius behind what he wrote. And the genius of what all of you wrote. Like I said, as we read each one of those submissions, we were like, how do we pick a winner? How do we pick a winner? But that's the whole idea of a contest, is you ultimately have to pick a winner, right, wrong, or indifferent. Uh, and I also don't want to minimize the winner that we selected either by saying that I think that the story was brilliant. And I'm going to do my best, and I won't do it justice. I know I won't do it justice, but I'm going to do my best to read it to you right now so that you can also enjoy what I think was a brilliant submission, uh, what I think was extremely well written, uh, extremely creative, uh, and it really struck home with all three of us. Like I said, it hit our, it hit, hit our top three list, uh, each one of us as judges. So uh, let me finally, after exhibiting again that when I was in Ireland and I kissed the Blarney Stone, that I do in fact have the gift of gab. But I think this soaholic behind me also would be able to tie you up in a conversation for probably days talking about her passion of sewing. So uh, I guess I share that quality with her too. Whatever her name is, whatever you named her. Uh, so again, I just want to acknowledge, and, and before I name a winner, I want to thank again uh, Veronica. I want to thank Randy, uh, who was submitted by his daughter Emily. I want to thank Lynn. I want to thank Sonny Jim. I want to thank, thank uh, Debbie. I want to thank Gray. I want to thank Mark. I want to thank uh, Rush, Rashama. I want to thank Linda. I want to thank Mary Ann. And I want to thank uh, Ava. Uh, all of you are winners in our book. I know I've said that before, but it can't be, it can't be overstated. So, without, without a drum roll, without a lot of fanfare, I'm going to tell you that after the three of us as judges looked at all of those brilliant writings and looked at our top three, we ended up selecting... Ava, uh, Ava Shoulder, as the ultimate uh, best writer in this case, from our from our perspective. Uh, and so I want to congratulate Ava. I, I think she did a, a super job. And as Bill had said, actually I shouldn't paraphrase Bill. I should tell you exactly what Bill had written. I didn't write any specific comment about Anna uh, about Ava's, other than I thought it was excellent, as did Hans. Uh, but Bill, in particular, wrote something, and I wanted to share that with you, if I can pull it up uh, quick enough, real quick. Uh, which, knowing me, I probably can't, but I'll give it a shot. So what Bill said when he submitted uh, his uh, thoughts to me is he said, I think the essay that gave me the most joy was the one by Ava Schilder. All of them were excellent, but some were long, some were not essays. I like the visual aspects of Ava's essay. I like the Christmas connection. I like the way it was written. There was a nice flow to it. So that's my pick. Um, again, and in, in not faulting, not faulting uh, uh, Bill in any way, uh, Bill had pointed to the fact that, you know, he didn't think that some of the submissions were uh, were essays. I know I said essay, but I also then kind of revised my statement by saying uh, writings. Writings are broader, essays are more narrow, and so if I created any confusion initially by saying essays, which I know I did, then I apologize for that because that wasn't an obstacle to me. I don't think it was an obstacle to Hans, but obviously as Bill was assessing things, and, and Bill is a very scholarly guy if you don't know that, I. Well, so is Hans. Hans has a PhD, uh, and I've got I've got a lot of education behind me as well. But for the two of us, at least for what we what we shared, what we spoke about, it wasn't an obstacle. Uh, you know, 
they were all writings, and they were brilliant writings. Uh, but it, all of us assessing them ultimately came to uh, Ava as our, our, our choice. So again, kind of like publishers, uh, it doesn't mean that we got it right. It doesn't mean anything less about what you submitted. But let me read, let me attempt to read Ava's. And uh, hopefully I at least come somewhere close to giving it uh, uh, justice because I think it's a, it's a well-written piece. It's a well-written uh, writing. Okay, and I'm not going to make real, a lot of eye contact. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to cheat and I'm going to read it behind the camera and zoom in on the poster behind me and read Ava's. That way I don't have to be concerned about giving you eye contact, okay? Because I know if I try to give you eye contact, I'm going to lose my place. All right, so let me zoom in on this. And I can't show all of it. I'm just going to zoom in on this cool lady's... How about right about there? Why don't we go with that? Yeah, I think that'll work. It's not perfect. You can see, kind of see Chris's machine behind it. Okay. So again, Abe, if I don't read it with the style or approach that you wanted uh, when you created this piece, then forgive me. Okay. One sunny afternoon, Phyllis Thimblebobbin was placed on the doorstep of the little old woman who lived in a shoe. She was raised to sew clothes for all the trolls in the village. One Christmas night, when everyone was fast asleep, Santa ripped his sack of toys on a needle poking out of one of Phyllis's pincushions. The presents clattered to the ground, creating a ruckus loud enough to wake Phyllis. She snuck out of her room armed with a sharp armed with her sharp wit. She approached the portly man, realizing that Santa was in a pickle, Phyllis snatched the bag and sewed it with her Singer sewing machine within seconds. Santa was so grateful he gave Phyllis a job in the North Pole sewing his suits, patching up the elves' clothing, and even giving Mrs. Claus sewing lessons. Phyllis's career snowballed from there. Soon she was making overhauls for the Easter Bunny, stitching up bite marks in the Tooth Fairy's uniform. She even signed a contract with the Fairy Godmother creating gowns for the princesses. Eventually, Phyllis saved up enough money to move her and her mother out of the shoe. Some say every time you hear a pin drop, that's Phyllis's, that's Phyllis starting up her trusty Singer sewing machine. The end. I enjoyed that. I know Bill enjoyed it. I know Hans enjoyed it. And I hope uh, you enjoyed hearing it again as well. Um, again, there's so many different ways when you're assessing a contest like this and you're writing, you're uh, reading what someone has written and uh, poured so much passion into uh, in trying to select that final piece that you just say, okay, this is the one that stands out. This is the one that uh, we feel is, is the pick. Uh, even until the very end, and that's part of the reason you know, I waited until midweek uh, before looking at Bill's comments again, looking at uh, Hans' comments again, looking at my own comments and kind of reflecting on that uh, before deciding to do this impromptu video and announcing uh, Ava as the ultimate winner. All of you are winners. And uh, it's hardly a consolation prize, probably, if you compare it to a Centennial Singer 201-2. Uh, but any of you that are willing to reach out uh, with a mailing address, uh, I would love to send you a Soaholic poster. And uh, I got them professionally printed. Uh, 
I think they're really cool. They're on a heavier paper. It's something that you could put up into your sewing room as a reminder of your achievement. Number one in stepping out of the shadows. Number two in writing brilliant pieces that I think we're all deserving uh, of recognition. And that's why I wanted to recognize everybody that submitted. Uh, so if you're willing to do that, if you want to do that, no force, no push. Uh, you know, I would love to send you one of those Soaholic posters uh, so you can uh, keep it there. And, and also, hopefully, as we're only like a hiccup away from 8,000 subscribers now, this contest that we're wrapping up now, finally, uh, because of how rapid our growth is, you know, averaging of around 400 to 450 new subscribers every month. Pew! Crazy. Uh, we are just a hiccup away from 8,000 subscribers. What does that mean? That means we're only a hiccup away from doing another major contest giveaway. And I can tell you that as excited as all of you were about the prospect of winning a Centennial Singer 201-2, uh, you're not going to be disappointed if you take a swing at this next contest and enter again and, uh, you know, have the possibility of winning this next machine that I'm going to uh, offer as a giveaway. You're not going to be disappointed. I can almost guarantee you, you're not going to be disappointed. Uh, and, uh, and I hope you'll do that. I hope you'll do that and not look at it as, I lost, I'm done. Because, as I tried to illustrate by sharing the, the story about Dr. Seuss, what if he had had that attitude? What if he had had that attitude after the first uh, publisher got back to him about his first book and said, nope. And then the second, nope. And the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the 20th, and the 21st, and the 22nd, all the way up until that 27th rejection of something that he had poured his heart and soul into, what if he had given up? Anywhere from the first publisher that rejected it all the way up until the 27th, he would have been a great dry cleaner, <laughs> as I shared in that little reading. He would have been a great dry cleaner. He would never have been that household name that pretty much all of us that watching this right now know. People around the world know Dr. Seuss as I illustrated in sharing the numbers about his sales. It's not even about the sales, it's about the impact. It's about the legacy. It's about his perseverance. And there's lots of stories about people like that in history that become household names because they don't give up. They don't, they don't look at rejection as a final step. They look at it as a stepping stone to get to going where they want to go. So that's what I hope you'll do. If you were one of those 11 individuals, again, if you were Veronica or Randy or Lynn or Sonny or Debbie or Gray or Mark or Rashama or Linda or Mary Ann, if you were any of those individuals that submitted what I would consider to be brilliant writings, and, and that's echoed by Hans and Bill as well, brilliant heartfelt writings, and yet you got rejected in a sense. You got rejected because you weren't picked to win that Singer uh, 201-2 Centennial model that Ava is going to receive now. Then I guess you're done. I guess your legacy is never going to be realized. You're never going to become that household name. You know, I, I've said it in recent premieres and I mean it. We're never old until regret takes the place of our dreams. Do you regret having submitted your writing? Do you regret having taken time to pour your heart into a submission and posting it on the Facebook page to be looked at by Bill and Hans and myself? Do you regret having stepped out of the shadows and having shared a piece of yourself in a creative writing piece? Gosh, I hope not. I mean, if, if, I, if I had that inclination that this somehow had broken your spirit, uh, I probably would never do a contest again. 
I wouldn't. Because that's not the goal of any of my contests. I can't speak for other contests out there. My goal is to get people to step out of the shadows and to show how amazing and how fabulous they are. And each one of you is fabulous. Each one of you is amazing. All 10 of you that didn't get selected. Yeah, I know. Ramble, 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 blah, 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 blah. I want to hammer that home. I want to drive it in. If you have a hard head, I want to drive it into your hard head. Don't give up because you didn't get picked this time. Because we have another contest coming up real soon for 8,000 subscribers. And if we continue to grow at the rate that we do, and I'm going to just say it, it's not because of me, it's not because of Bill, it's not because of Hans that we're growing so rapidly. It's because of all of you. Because I know in your circles, you mentioned Cow Country Vintage Sewing. I know in your circles, you talk about this funny, goofy guy from Wisconsin and the fun that we have together in our classroom uh, through all of these premieres and all of these videos. You're the one, you're the wind, in a sense, you're the wind beneath the wings that are continuing to grow this channel at such rapid speed. So I hope that you don't give up on this. I hope that you see it as a stepping stone and not a stumbling block. And I hope that you embrace the same opportunity that Dr. Seuss did after so many rejections and realizing that in an instant there can be a game changer. Again, like the little story I shared, what if he had walked down the other side of the street? What if you had given up after the first contest instead of going on to the second and then in the second contest prevailing as the winner or the third contest or the fourth contest? So see this as an opportunity. See this as a stepping stone. And uh, Ava, I want to congratulate you. I think you did a great job. I think we had so, such a hard time picking you as the winner. Honestly, we did. And I enjoyed um, you know, speaking just about your submission. I enjoyed all the people that seemed to step into your corner and rally and encourage you and uh, make remarks about your submission. It happened with others as well, but you know, up until the bitter end, I think people were continuing to jump in and, and just trying to encourage you because you had a lot of stiff competition out there. I, I think you would, you would be nodding right now if you were in the workshop and you would say, I'll be honest with you, Scott and Bill and Hans, I'm almost, I'm almost surprised that I was picked because there were so many other brilliant writings. There were so many incredible writings. I don't know how you guys picked me. Uh, and that's the way it is with contests. That's the way it is with contests. You know, the, the old saying, one of my favorite sayings, if any of you that know me pretty well know I love quotes, and one of my favorite sayings is, humility, humility is, a, is a strange thing. The moment you think you have it, you lost it. So when you write something that's brilliant, like all of you did, and you submit it, and people are praising you and, and liking it, and giving positive feedback to you, either on Facebook or face-to-face -face or texting or who knows how you communicate with all of your circles. Uh, it, just, it just gives you a little jolt of inspiration. It gives you a little sense of, wow, I am really a great writer. I really am uh, submitting something that's brilliant. And that's, that's the way I want you to step away from this again. I want you to look at it as, okay, where's my next opportunity? Where's my next goal? And, uh, and don't be afraid to not be humble about how great your writing was. You know, the old saying about humility, throw that to the side. Because when you're, when you're embracing the gifts and skills that you have, uh, God-given gifts, I would just say, uh, it's okay to say, I'm a great writer. And I'm thankful for that. And so... Uh, at any rate, it's, it's been a real long day, and I know I'm rambling. So thank you, as always, for your patience with me. And thank you also for all of you that uh, also not only wrote, but supported those that wrote as well. So that's it. I better sign off before the camera just blinks out, which could be a blessing. Uh, or you guys just click off and go and check cat videos or something like that. Uh, that's an idea.
could I incorporate a cat video into something fun that I do with a... I know, somebody could mail me a cat and then I could do the unboxing and the cat would jump out. No, no, no. I, I, I'm seeing PETA. I'm seeing PETA all over that. Forget that idea. Do not mail me your cat. Okay, please don't forget that idea. <laughs> Done. Delete, 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 delete. So, uh, and also I want to thank, uh, take this opportunity real quick to thank uh, Hans and to thank Bill as well. Um, if you don't know it, these guys are not paid. They volunteer their time, not only in judging a contest like this, which, you know, reading all of the submissions, all 11 submissions, and then taking the time in a, a legitimate, credible way to evaluate them and mull over them and muse over them and all of that, it's a, uh, that's a substantial time commitment. But these guys go way above and beyond that. They also are behind the scenes all the time answering questions that come in through Facebook Messenger, through the Cow Country Vintage uh, Facebook page. We get a lot of questions from all around the world. Uh, and all I can say is I would not be able to do it on my own. So also a, a special clap to these men that they take such a weight off of my shoulders as I'm trying to do all the other things that I'm trying to do uh, so that they can help uh, field some of these questions. Some questions that require a huge amount of research. And uh, some of you watching this premiere right now may be able to say, yeah, I can testify to that. I benefited from something that Bill uh, researched for me or information that Hans gathered for me or a link that was shared that got me back on track with what I needed to be able to overcome. I thought it was hopeless is what some people have submitted back to us. You know, I never thought I would find the answer. And yet somehow Bill and Hans and or myself, I would say we've got a real high approval rating, a real high success rate. Uh, so if you contact one of these guys and they do the research, take time to reach back out and to thank them, would you? Because again, these are, these are guys that are volunteering their time generously to try to help uh, fellow vintage sewing machine lovers. So uh, take that time to circle back, please. Please circle back and not, you don't have to do it for me if you don't want to, that's totally cool. But do it for Bill and do it for Hans, okay? All right, off track, back on track. Congratulations, Ava, and congratulations to all of you we're doing an outstanding job with this contest. Another contest coming up soon, so keep watch. God bless.